Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Jack Lipton about the good old USA and sustainability and rare earths. How are you today, Jack? I'm great, Tracy. Thank you. Oh, it's lovely to see you. And so why don't we just start right there with U.S. and China trade wars. What's happening to the rare earth market in the United States? It, the rare earth market in the United States is, is definitely hot, so to speak. Uh, be, we have a directive. Remember, the president of the United States is the chief executive. He's not the king or, or dictator. So he has given a directive to the Department of Defense. And this is unusual for a direct, specifically telling them that the Department of Defense must become independent of all other nations in, it, in its uh, necessary supplies of rare earths. Uh, to say this has caused consternation is to, is to really undervalue what, what happened. Uh, they... They have a plan, the Defense Department, and they have broken the supply chain down into segments, like they have a plan on looking at mines, uh, uh, so resources, and recycling, and, and uh, uh, extracting uh, rares from coal is a very hot topic in the United States. And it is, I know many of your audience will say, oh my God, that can't be economic, and it's foolish, it's political. It can be economic. And believe me, there are a couple of projects in the U.S. that look pretty damn good uh, for extracting uh, critical rare earths from coal. And there's mo there are more sources than coal. Uh, we also have in the United States, as, as you know, uh, fertilizer mining and, and phosphoric acid producers, uh, two or three of uh, majors. Uh, these companies have significant rare earths. In, rare earths in their uh, minerals, and they obviously they don't recover them. They, uh, to be honest with you, here's the interesting thing: the company Southern Ionics in Florida, which is now owned by Dupont, uh, produces zircon materials for the for the market. They ship them to the Western U.S., where we have uh, ceramic makers make zirconia products, and it's it's monazite. The monazite that they that they take out to get uh, removed from the zircon uh, goes to is shipped to China directly from Florida, and, be, and so the radioactivity, the thorium in that goes out of the boat. Bye bye. And but this has been going on for years. In fact, that material was the source for the Rhone Palenque slash Solvay separation plant that was in Texas until 20 years ago. So. To say that uh, we only have to worry about hard rock mining in the United States is not true. We, we have rare earths from mineral sands in Florida, which uh, a business which has been on for, for decades. Uh, we're now looking at rare earth extraction from coal. The U.S. Department of Energy has a huge program on that. And uh, now the Department of Defense is looking at the, at the mining. Now, as, you pro as your listeners probably know, um, you, we have uh, Texas Mineral Resources is is under development, uh, if, if, and uh, MP uh, a finance group bought uh, the Molly Corp mine and the processing plant. The mine is now operating at full blast. Uh, they say they will be able to do the uh, revive the processing operation out there that that would be a very large operation the former project phoenix uh i don't know if that'll happen or not and uh rare element resources uh is definitely active and quite frankly in my opinion it's a it's an outstanding value uh it's i think it's the best rare earth deposit in the united states for rapid development that's my opinion i'm not involved uh, with uh, okay. relevant resources i have to stop you right there because i'm not sure i heard that properly are you saying that your favorite pick for two wards rapid development is rare element resources i just want to confirm i heard that correct of of the existing heart Harder rock mines in the United States. My pick is rare element resources That's for rapid development. Perfect. Correct. Thank you. Forgive me for interrupting you, but I'm sure our listeners are leaning forward. They've got their notebook, notebooks open. They're like, <laughs> Jack's talking. We got to find out what Jack's saying. Okay. And so, you know, you're kind of going through the list here. I did send you a note prior to this interview saying, you know, a lot of Canadian publicly listed rare earth companies or companies that. Uh, espoused to have rare earths in them, are getting very excited by the increased interest 
uh, by the US government in sustainability directives. Now, in this particular case, I wanted to know whether or not, I know you have a lot of high-level discussions. Uh, are they actually, will they actually entertain Canadian sources as uh, achieving their sustainability goals? Absolutely. Uh, the question, I, I, w I was at a meeting uh, <laughs> at the vice president's office building. That's on the White House grounds. So you can say uh, in a bar that I was at the White House, you know, that that is technically correct. Okay. So, um, and there were people there uh, from a very high level in the executive department. And uh, I asked directly, I said, hey, you know, we're talking about uh, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, et cetera. And, and the gentleman who had the, uh, the most important man in the room said, look, he said, as far as we're concerned, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, any NATO or CETO ally that can assist us in this program, we consider that to be as if they were in a domestic uh, resource. Uh, so he said, and he, he emphasized that Canada was definitely okay <laughs> as a supplier. So I, people keep, I don't know what they're thinking, why, why there's some issue there. There is not. The issue is this. The first two the light wearers from Linus, heavy wearers from uh, Northern, the first two producing wear earth companies in the alliance are Australia. Okay. Uh, the United States would welcome Canadian companies. You know, the, the logistics are a lot better from uh, from Quebec or, or Saskatchewan or uh, then. Okay. And, and with you having a, a, such a, an extensive background with all the rare earth companies, mm. you know, I'm sure you recall uh, Avalon Advanced Materials. Sure. Uh, of course, uh, UCOR is Canadian listed, but is in Alaska, American. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, we have, of course, Great Western Strange, uh, Strange Lake. Lake from Quest. <laughs> Uh, okay. And I believe Peter Cashin's moved uh, some of those uh, properties into Imperial. But do you remember yeah. in particular anything that you'd like to point out from Canada, a property that you particularly liked? Uh, I, I don't want to, at this point in time, pick any, any favorite. But what I can tell you is that the, the general consensus that I heard was that they, they like what's going on in Quebec because Quebec is so loaded with, with companies that have, a, a, as well as light wearers, heavy wearers. Please remember the deficit in this world is in heavy wear earths. The Chinese, believe it or not, are importing ore from Myanmar for most of their heavy wear earths today. So this is, this is the critical thing. And quite frankly, my, my experience in the Canadian uh, market is that there are a lot of deposits in Quebec that, that favor the, the heavy words. So that's where I would be. That, I'm not saying there's anything negative about any, anybody else, but the, the Quebec government seems to be interested in pro, more interested in promoting Quebec based mining than other provinces that I, that as I see, that's what I'm hearing. And of course, uh, I saw on uh, BNN uh, recently, they did an interview when you know, the media attention has, of course, increased on rare earths. Yep. And uh, one of the so-called experts was explaining how rare earths got their name because they're rare. Now, yep. as the founder of the term technology metals, uh, yep. you coined that term. And of course, we right. ran with it. I don't know. That must have been seven or eight years ago. Was, can you tell it was 12 us, years ago. <laughs> can you tell us, was that 12 years ago? Could you please give our audience just briefly an overview of rare earths, and then we're going to try and get you on as often as we can to keep an update on this Look, market. Uh, you know, rare earths is a term coined in the 18th century for unusual uh, oxides. Okay, in other words, they, they all they in that in that time at the very beginning of chemistry, they couldn't. They thought these rare materials were unusual and rare because they had no way of determining what was what was in those minerals so so they and there weren't very many of they came from Sweden at that time okay there's a foolish um, meme going on in in the academic world called earth abundant so if you, if you look at the the earth's crust you say my god neodymium the rare earth metal 
is more common than lead. So how hard can it be to produce this? All this stuff is silly. That is asininely stupid because we can only mine deposits that can be economically concentrated, separated, etc. Okay, and and where where are most of those deposits in North America? They're in Canada. Okay, I would say of the perhaps 100 deposits in North America for, uh, that are were subject of, of development ideas. Uh, what 90 are in Canada? At least 90. Okay, so um, there are they rare? Uh, no, are they rare in mineable concentrations? Yes. Okay, and. There's no way of telling where these concentrations are without going out in the outback, as they say in Australia or in Canada, perhaps, with a pick and and with an eye for these correct minerals and a case of a single uh, of scotch because you need something to do in in the outback. Okay, so uh, this exploration has done more in Canada than any other nation that I know. And Canada is loaded with developable deposits. The issue is is money. What's what's the problem in Canada? I'll tell you right now. It's the same problem in every nation on this planet. There's no downstream market. So uh, you may recall from step version one, everybody was going to produce a mixed con. And I said, this is the biggest con of all at the time. Because there's, what do you do with it? You sell it to China. What are the Ch- And they say, oh, yes, well, the Chinese will pay us a, a basket price of 65, 85%. The Chinese were paying 40% of the contained. And they all knew it, but they had a lot of fancy nonsense uh, balance sheets and, and income statements and all nonsense. Okay. Right now, you if you can produce rare earths as separated oxides, and then if we redevelop metal and alloy making in North America, which I think is going to happen, okay, then there's, there's, there's a whole market. Now, this is the time for Canadian rare earth companies to get off, you know what, and start seriously submitting plans for developing their projects to produce concentrated ores. That's what they can do. Stop talking about they're going to make metals and alloys and recycling. It's all nonsense because their job is to produce mineral concentrates. And there's so many of them. So something's going to pop in Canada okay? because there's a lot of good. I note that Avalon has a, an Australian investor. Very good sign. Very good. Well, Jack, thank you so much for joining us today. As always, we appreciate the update.